okay. The next speaker is going to be Maria Hita Perez, who is uh, talking to us about coupling 3D, 3 Joseph Johnson flux qubits for non stochastic adiabatic quantum computation. And uh, she is from Madrid. She's oh. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Today I'm going to present our work on 3 Josephson Junction flash qubit couplings for adiabatic quantum computation. Particularly, I'm going to introduce the work in these two papers. The first one, ultra strong capacity coupling of flash qubits, provides a numerical and analytical study of the effective inter capacitive interactions between two flash qubits and a flash qubit on a resonator. And the second one, 3 Josephson Junction flash qubit couplings, provides a complete numerical study of the interactions between 3 Josephson Junction flash qubits. Among all of the different platforms that have been proposed for the implementation of adiabatic quantum computers, superconducting circuits stand for their flexibility in fabrication. They provide building blocks for quantum computation, such as harmonic oscillators and qubit forming and harmonic multilevel systems, such as church qubits, flash qubits, or 3 Joseph and Janssen flash qubits. And also, multiple couple mechanisms between them, such as, mutual, such as mutual inductance, capacitance, and other superconducting tunable elements. This allows for the realization of a large variety of uh, effective Hamiltonians, which are not only useful for adiabatic quantum computation, but also for quantum simulation and other quantum computation algorithms. For example, we have this circuit here, which reproduces an icing type interactions, typical to that uh, that they use for the wave quantum annealers. Or this circuit here, which exhibits a James coming dynamic. We are particularly interested in the implementation of non-stochastic Hamiltonians using superconducting circuits. I'm going to briefly review what a non-stochastic Hamiltonian uh, is, even though most of you already know this. A quantum Hamiltonian is stochastic in a certain basis if its entries are real and its diagonal elements are non-positive. These definitions uh, let us differentiate two different types of Hamiltonians. We have stochastic Hamiltonians, which uh, do not suffer from the same problem, are, are in principle solvable using Monte Carlo methods. And uh, on the other hand, non-stochastic Hamiltonians, which suffer from the same problem and cannot be simulated efficiently. This, make the, this makes them intrinsically interested because they can be used to simulate other quantum system that suffer from the same problem. And uh, this type of Hamiltonians are also interested because they have been shown to, shown to enable a universal adiabatic quantum computation. So what we do in our works is we propose several superconducting circuits to implement these non-stochastic uh, Hamiltonians. Particularly, we study the coupling between three Josephson Janssen flash qubits. A three Josephson Janssen flash qubit consists on a superconducting loop interrupted by three Josephson Janssens, two of them identical and one of them alpha times smaller. The main property of this system is that when the external flux, when the external flux equals half of the flux quanta, it develops two opposite sign current states, left and right, which can be connected through tunneling across the potential barrier. Where we are particularly interested in the tunneling inside of the unit cell, which we call D1, in this direction. The symmetric and antisymmetric superposition of the two opposite sign current state form the low energy subspace of the system and are the, the, the ideal candidates to form a qubit. And hence, the effective Hamiltonian of the system can be written in the form of a typical qubit Hamiltonian, where delta represents the gap between the zero and one states and is um, also called the tunnel amplitude through D1. So we want to, cop to couple two three Josephson Janssen flash qubits. We first derive the full general Hamiltonian for this type of system following the rules for circuit quantization and circuit theory, and we find that the general Hamiltonian has this form, where, where H1 and H2 
are the Hamiltonian of the two single elements, the qubit, qubit one and the qubit two, and the last terms give interactions between them. Then we derive the effective Hamiltonians. We do so by means of the Cipher wall transformation, which maps eigenspaces in the full Hamiltonian basis to eigenspaces in the Berg Hamiltonian basis without the interactions. Provided that the energy subspace of the system can be divided into two subspaces, a low energy subspace, which we call P, and a high energy subspace, which we call Q. In our case of two flash qubit couples, couplings, we have that the low energy is composed by the four lowest energies of our system, uh, which is formed by the composition of the two qubit qubit states. We perform this study using two different procedures. First, we perform an analytical study following the typical perturbation method, but we also perform a numerical study for uh, following the non-perturbative method proposed here by Kosani and Warburton. This method allows us to obtain the effective Hamiltonian simply in terms of the full Hamiltonian, the projectors into the low energy subspace, and the Cipher wall transformation U. The only issue with this procedure is that it is computationally expensive. Note that uh, computing U in the full basis requires working with matrices whose size depends directly on the number of elements of the circuit and the dimension of the physical qubits or elements. Or either uh, truncating the, the Hamiltonian to a certain number of states that has to be determined by convergence. We propose here a method to avoid this obstacle simply by computing P0 UP in terms of the uh, operator A, which comes directly from the singular value decomposition of the multiplication between the two low energy subspace, the ver and the full projectors into the low energy subspace. Hence, the computational cost of the process is reduced to that of obtaining the low energy eigenstates of the system, which can be done efficiently with numerous uh, methods. So, when we perform this Cipher wall transformation, we find that the general effective Hamiltonian for this type of circuits of two flash qubits coupled by a capacitor and by a Josephson junction has this form. When the two first elements are simply the effective qubit Hamiltonians, where delta can be renormalized by the capacitive coupler, and the last term gives interactions between the qubits in three different directions, sigma s, sigma s, sigma y, sigma y, and sigma c, sigma c, and is modulated by the coupling strengths, which we call j. We first study the capacity coupling between the flash qubit. This means that we consider this circuit, but without this Josephson junction. When studying the effective Hamiltonian, what we find is a strong renormalization of the qubit gap due to the added capacitance and interactions in the three different directions. We find, uh, for small values of the parameter gamma, we find a strong sigma y, sigma y contribution, which comes from the expected church interactions between the two flash qubits. And when increasing gamma, we see that the other two terms gain strength. We find an also strong sigma c, sigma c contribution, which, com which comes from interactions, med interactions mediated, for the, for, uh, mediated by the high energy eigenstates of the system and, comes, and becomes equal in magnitude. Uh, to sigma y, sigma y for a sufficiently large gamma, and a residual sigma s, sigma s contribution, which uh, is directly related to intercept tunneling and comes with an enhancement of church noise. We then study the inductive coupling between three Josephson junctions flash qubit mediated by a Josephson junction whose Josephson energy is gamma times the Josephson energy of the flash qubits. In this case, we find an ultra strong sigma s, sigma s coupling, which comes from the expected uh, dipolar magnetic interactions between the flash qubits, and some residual sigma y, sigma y, and sigma c, sigma c turns, which are up to three times the up to three times smaller and can hence uh, be neglected. In both cases, we see that the um, coupling strengths depend directly on the qubit parameters. This extensive analysis of the capacitive and inductive coupling suggests that combining them for, uh, could allow for the obtention of 
non-stochastic Hamiltonians were uh, with interactions in, in the three arbitrary, with arbitrary interactions in the three directions. One could, for example, couple the two flash qubits using a cis-antithesis -anti squid to find uh, capacitive interactions fixed by design and an inductive interactions that can be modulated uh, by changing the flux treatment in the squid. So another interesting approach to the coupling of flux qubits is to use uh, an oscillator to mediate the interactions. For example, in this work by Manuel Pino and Juan Jose Garcia Ripoll, they study a quantum annealer where the qubit interactions are mediated by uh, bosons in an oscillator. In this type of, of superconducting circuit architectures, we find that the spin boson uh, Hamiltonian encodes an spin-spin Hamiltonian with interactions in, the, in a direction which is determined by the spin uh, boson interactions. For example, in the work by Manuel Pino and Juan Jose Garcia Ripoll that I have just mentioned, they couple a flash qubit and a resonator in the sigma x direction. And what they find is that this Hamiltonian yields sigma s, sigma s uh, qubit, qubit interactions. In this respect, we study the capacity coupling between a 3 Josephson Janssen flash qubit and an LC resonator. Again, following the rules for circuit quantization, we find that the general Hamiltonian of this system is given by the Hamiltonian of the two single elements, the qubit and the resonator, plus a term given the interactions between them. Then, using the Schiffer wall transformation, we derive again the effective Hamiltonian, and we find that it is given by the Hamiltonian of the qubit with a, a parameter delta, which is also renormalized by the coupling, plus the Hamiltonian of the resonator in terms of creation and annihilation operators, plus a term given interactions between them in a direction which is perpendicular to that that one find, finds when, stand, when studying the inductive coupling between a flash qubit and a resonator. This last term provides evidence of ultra-strong coupling with magnitudes above 12% of the qubit and resonator energies, and is also dependent of the qubit and resonator parameters. To conclude, I would like to make some final remarks. We have derived a complete set of Hamiltonian from the coupling of flash qubits, finding evidence of ultra-strong coupling and non-stochasticity. We introduced an efficient method for obtaining the non-perturbative FFT Hamiltonian of theoretical a superconducting circuit elements coupled, such as uh, flash qubits, and we saw ultra-strong capacitive qubit resonator interactions, which combined when they, with the inductive interaction could allow for the study of new regimes in light matter interaction. This way, we take a step towards non-stochastic adiabatic quantum computation, providing also tools for quantum simulation, the study of new, uh, new ultra-strong dynamics, or novel Hamiltonian models. For future works, we would like to study the tunability of these couplings by adding different circuit elements and examine the suitability of the presented Hamiltonians for quantum simulation, quantum annealing, adiabatic quantum computation, and other quantum computation algorithms. With, with that, I want to thank you all for your attention, and I cannot leave without introducing our group. We are the Quantum Information and Foundation Group. We work as the, at the Institute of Fundamental Physics in Madrid, which is part of the Spanish Research Council. And this project has been made in particular in collaboration with Gabriel Jauma, Juan Jose Garcia Ripoll, and Manuel Pino, who is now working at the Nanolab at Universidad of Salamanca. This, this project is also part of the project, uh, European funded project Abacus. And that's all. Thank you all for your attention. Questions are, are welcome. Okay, thank you for your talk, Maria. We are open for questions from the audience. Yes? Um, can, can you, can you, would you be able to extend your numerical analysis to four qubits? say three or four qubits coupled using similar yeah. methods. Yeah, in principle, that's the advantage of using uh, this formula, formula instead of this formula, because you can, like, um, you can like obtain the numerical Hamiltonian for the four qubits, and then you only have to find, like, uh, in this case, if you want four qubits, to elevate it to four, 
levels of the system, and then you can perform this analysis and obtain the effective Hamiltonian. In principle, we have not tried yet. I actually have a question about this particular formula. I did not really understand what you are exactly transforming from this uh, from this uh, like standard Schifferville transformation to this um, parameter of this uh, of this operator A. Can you please explain what this operator is? Uh, how is it different from the standard Schifferville transformation? Yeah. So what we do is that we uh, use the property of the of the uh, operator U, the cipher wall transformation, and we find that it can be written in terms of this parameter A, which is uh, which comes from the singular value of the composition of the multiplication of the projectors into the low energy subspace of the Hamiltonian and the Ver Hamiltonian. So what we do is we uh, find the low energy eigenstates of the system without the interactions and with the interactions, we then find uh, the operator B by multiplying the two projectors, and then we perform the singular value decomposition. The properties of the multiplication P0, P, or P udaga P0, ensure that we can rewrite this form in terms of this uh, operator A, which comes from the uh, operators that we find when performing the singular value decomposition. So if you want like more details, uh, it is explained on our, on this paper, on the one of the three Joseph and Janssen flash qubit couplings. And also you can ask me and I can send, send you like the derivation of the formula. Uh, thank you. Maybe uh, today in, during the break, I will ask you. Okay. Comment on on uh, what approximations uh, need to apply and, and whether the you know how accurate the results are when you uh, do the singular value decomposition. Uh, it is uh, in principle it is the same uh, if you use like the full formula because you don't have to do any approximation. It's just like algebra, uh, multiplying matrix and projectors, and you find this. Good, thank you. So, as you probably know, there was a paper by D-Wave uh, mm -hmm. a year or two ago where they experimentally demonstrated non-stochastic interactions with a yeah, capacitive the, circuit. Yeah. Could you comment on uh, similarities and differences between what you're proposing here and what they did? Yeah. Like, um, like I think that the circuit scan is like similar, but we in 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 their case they use like. Uh, Trasman qubits, I think, or uh, composed by RF squids, qubits. And we use these three Josephson Janssen flash qubits. I think that is like one of the main difference. And also, I'm not sure if they use like a perturbative method for the study of the effective Hamiltonian. That's what I think. And, and I think that, uh, that are like the, the two like main difference. But also, I think that uh, it is true that the results that we find uh, like coincide with their results. So I think that's a good thing, um, and that's it. We just wanted like to study another like um, qubit uh, proposal for implementing this type of circuits. No? Okay. Uh, I have a, so what are, you, uh, what are your assumptions when you consider separately the, the capacitive coupling and the inductive coupling? Do you know yeah. what you are losing by making this uh, separate analysis? 
uh, we don't like uh, we simply like uh, build the full Hamiltonian, taking only into account here uh, in when we consider the capacity coupling, we only take into account the capacitor. And then uh, when considered the Josephson junction, we only take in, into account the Josephson junction. Where really in this in this uh, graphic here, we also consider the capaci the capacitance that is uh, always coupled to the Josephson junction, but uh, the interactions are uh, much more stronger from uh, for Josephson junctions than for capacitors. So it is. Um, Important. Thanks. We have time for a last question. Thank you for the nice talk. Um, so do, do these coupling values, uh, how tunable are they as a function of that external flux value or the, the flux that would penetrate there kind of in the loop defined by the coupler? <clears throat> and then also, uh, or do they tune at all with any application of offset charges to the circuit? Okay, so um, in principle, these two coupling uh, cannot uh, be are not tunable in this form, but for example, uh, you could replace this Josephson junction by a squid, which are is a loop consisting on two Josephson junction, and then you could like tune it uh, using a flux threatening the squid, and also and also uh, another study that we want to make is to. Uh, find a way to make the, capacit the capacitive interactions tunable because in this form, with just a capacitor, it isn't tunable. An option could be um, the circuit we present here, for example. Okay, since we have to move forward with the schedule, I would say that we can leave further questions. Uh, you can, for further questions, you can contact Maria personally.